Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Fueled by Progress, hosted by me, Mark Joseph Szymanski. We have Mr. Jordan Smith with us today. How you doing, man? I'm good. Thank you for yeah. bringing me on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. Absolutely, man. Um, so we've known each other for a little bit here uh, through Sarah and Jesse and the other and all the other gang yeah. that uh, some of them have already been on the show. So I appreciate you coming on. And um, maybe give like me because we've, we've talked before. We I know we had a couple calls actually about like podcasting and just different things like that. Yeah. Um, and you have a lot going on right now you uh back in school and everything like that after graduating so maybe you just kind of fill me in and and our viewers in on where you're at so far with uh that stuff and just kind of context and we'll roll from there yeah um thanks uh yeah right now i'm going to point park um downtown pittsburgh if people don't know Mm -hmm. um i'm the ga in the athletic department there's two others so i'm working with them uh it's mainly kind of sports information communication kind of stuff probably eventually going to be doing a little marketing and operations kind of work um it's really cool though uh it's the stuff i like to do i did it at la roche um helping out in the athletic department i interned at Pitt, um doing the same kind of stuff as well so yeah i'm doing that so i'll have this position for the next two years Mm -hmm. and while doing that uh obtaining two masters an mba and then a master's in media communications nice so yeah, definitely be busy. Um, so far, my classes seem like pretty similar to what I did at LaRoche. Mm-hmm. Uh, same kind of business stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm grateful for where I'm at, getting that position. Um, so the next two years feel sort of concrete and like, you know, I'm secure with what I'm doing and I'm enjoying it. Right. What was your major it at LaRoche? You said marketing and management. I minored in finance too. Gotcha. Yeah. So what was your plan there? originally when when you were going through la roche you i know you worked a lot in like with the penguins and with sports and stuff like that what was the what was the initial path and kind of like still like something you're kind of pursuing yeah so the penguins have um in their pr department every year they have a ga um not that you're attending school because it sounds familiar but right. you're just like grad assistant mm-hmm. aka like glorified intern i yeah. guess <laughs> you're yeah. like the head of the interns so i was going to apply for that the steelers have the same thing I was going to apply there as well for that. And then I was applying for a regular sports information job at St. Vincent College. And then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. This was all in March. I was like, all right, I just hope to get one of these and then go from there. All of them got canceled. So (laughs) yeah, it was like, all right. And then the next couple of months was very quiet. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I know a lot of people that have just been negatively affected, like obviously the whole world, but like especially kids that were in school. You know, and mm-hmm. like graduating and like yourself, you're trying to get internships. I know a few people that are just like, yeah, well, we're not we're not offering that position anymore. Yeah. So that's kind of crappy. But um, but I mean, sports, I, again, we've talked before, sports have been a big part of your life, right? I mean, I know you played some. Was it soccer specifically? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So with that, and then what do you think, like, what kind of fueled that transition? Do you still play? Did you kind of like decide that you wanted to move more into like being around sports, but not? like playing in them or how do you, what would you kind of say there? Yeah. Um, I played soccer my whole life. Um, I played my first year at La Roche Mm -hmm. and then stopped after that to focus on work. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and I wasn't enjoying it a ton. Wasn't like the best program for me there, but, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, since I was a kid, I've always loved stats. I've loved reading about them in the analytics of the game. And I knew it's what I wanted to do to be around sports. You know, Mm -hmm. it's fun. Yeah. Um, at least for me. So yeah, that was my passion. So, um, sophomore year of college wasn't a great year for me. It Mm -hmm. was, um, I wasn't happy with a lot of stuff and some of the people, you know, we've talked about were Mm -hmm. a huge influence on me kind of waking up and like getting my crap together. And, and junior year is kind of when I really started to like, just head down, just keep working hard every day, just going towards a goal yeah yeah we should dig into that because i think that those those types of things right there like how you described right like you get to college and it's brand new experience you know and there's a lot of new people um uh, you stayed on campus yeah yeah so it's it's totally different you know you're you're away from home and all that um i didn't have that experience but i know that it changes a lot of people and like Mm -hmm. you just pointed out there you know you go from freshman year you know you're kind of getting your feet wet 
and then you go into sophomore year and you say you're kind of having like a, a toughish time there and it sounds like there was a trend you know transformation there yeah what, what would you maybe if we we you know if you want to kind of elaborate on that i think that that's probably gonna like kind of provide a lot more context as to how you've how you've transitioned and and, and hopefully you know obviously positively uh move forward since then yeah yeah um so freshman year i mean what was awesome uh i roomed with two of my great friends uh from high school mm-hmm. um and that was good and all and freshman year soccer was fun then we got to go on a europe trip in the spring that was great and then sophomore year i just uh how do i explain it i felt kind of like a little empty yeah i felt a lack of purpose mm-hmm. um i was looking at all these people doing well mm-hmm. and not that i was jealous of them but i was just like you know why isn't that me? Why right. isn't things going? And I think I applied to some positions. Um, and I, I'm trying to think of what, I think I applied to something with the penguins. Mm-hmm. Didn't hear anything back at all. Um, trying to go into junior year that is, mm-hmm. but the summer of my, um, freshman year, I interned at the river hounds. Mm-hmm. So I used to train with them and stuff. So yeah. it was easy to get in and do that. So that was fun. But yeah, sophomore year was a lot of just like, playing video games, Mm -hmm. um, you know, not doing super well at school. You know, I just wasn't doing well at anything. It was, it wasn't a good time. So the summer going into junior year, I started listening to Gary V a lot, Mm -hmm. Gary Vaynerchuk and Jordan Peterson. Yep. And those guys really changed my perspective on a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, first off, I was never a partier or anything. So it wasn't like I was drinking six days a week, like some college students, but Peterson specifically, um, his, like a lot of his main message is like, you got to take on a burden, you got to take on responsibility and you know, that's how you have a purpose in life. Um, yeah. sort of that suffering can be a good thing. Mm-hmm. And with Gary V, you know, he's kind of just like, you need to work your mm-hmm. freaking face off yeah, and, yeah. and work a ton. So yeah, I came in junior year and you know, all of a sudden I had one internship and I was like, I'm applying for another. And then I, I would have like two internships at the same time. Mm. And it just turned into like junior, senior year of just working like yeah. a ton, but it never felt like work. It was, yeah. I was doing what I love to do. Yeah. So those guys really helped me with that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think that we've talked again and, and I've, you know, I try to do my best to explain that to people as well that that have gone through the same things. That is extremely, there's just like a certain thing that happens when you find people like Jordan Peterson, Gary yeah. Vee, and you're in these places where you don't really know exactly what, you know, to do. You know, you're just kind of like in a funk or whatever. And and I totally, I, that just, it's resonated with me so much. The mm. the idea of that Peterson puts puts forth like with, you have to, you have to have some sort of responsibility, you know, yeah. like you have to have something. And I don't know if you listen to, um, that that reminds me of like uh, Jocko Willink, uh, yeah. like you know, yeah, like, like just Jocko. like the extreme ownership type thing and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Like that just really it really resonates with me because like it it actually it's almost like the de- the definition of meaning you mm-hmm. know in your life. And you know we could I mean, I'm sure we could talk talk for hours about like you know all the different things and like the books that that uh, J- I don't read, but <laughs> but <laughs> but you know like I yeah. definitely watched a lot of lectures and everything like that. And um, you know Gary is another one has did that kind of like. As throughout, as you went through that time, you know your tra- that transition period there of like you know kind of realizing that you know there's a lot of things out there that you could do that would make you happy and make you fulfilled, and then you started chasing some of those. What were some of the things like? What were some of those opportunities where you just was it? You said like with the river hounds and different stuff like that. Was it like um, I think you mentioned before like statistician and everything like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like was that like what what was it just being around sports or was it being around like, like what kind of give me the aspects of that, that you really enjoy. Yeah. Um, junior year, I just reached out to our, our athletic department and mm-hmm. the SID, which stands for sports information director Yeah, and just talked to him and just started, uh, yeah, doing the stats during the games, some social media stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, you get to go to a sports game and I wasn't even getting paid, but like, it was fun. Right. Um, And then, yeah, one opportunity led to another and I just did everything I could to network and get my name out there. I Mm -hmm. emailed tons and tons of people. Um, I met everyone I could. 
Uh, I did marketing stuff for the Steelers, working game days, that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Um, what else? Yeah, I interned at Pitt. That was a media relations SID kind of position as well. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to do a lot during it. And, and the thing, too, is like I, I did most of my stuff literally just my last two years of college. Mm-hmm. And that just shows like you don't even need all four years to do it all. Right. Like I got I, you know, I felt like I was a bum my first two years, but I still was able to come back and squeeze it in. Right. So even if you're a freshman who wasted your time, you know, partying or whatever, you still have a couple of years to, you know, get back on track and stuff. And that's, right. that's what I felt like I kind of did. Yeah. Um, just being lazy and stuff. And it's like, you just got to go after it. And, um, going back to like Peterson and Gary V mm-hmm. one thing, especially more Peterson, one thing, um, I started doing cause of him is I just quit playing video games. Yeah. completely i sold my xbox mm-hmm. and i'm not against video games it's okay if people play them a little bit like right. they're they're fun yeah but i felt like if i want to intern for the penguins one day if i want to um work for them one day if i want to work for a pro team like should i really be spending the next couple of years going to class and then just playing video games the rest of the night like right. no that's wasting my time i need to work you know right so. yeah I think it's easier, obviously, when you find something, again, that, that you love to do because, yeah. you know, maybe you like playing video games, but, you know, if you would rather be working on something that is enjoyable to you, then it's almost an easy, it's an easy decision, right? Yeah. Or easier, I guess, than, than, than some other, um, you know, situations. As you, as you went through and, you know, you got to that point now where you graduated from La Roche um, and pursuing this stuff, um, like, you know, what, like, where's, where do you see it taking you? Like, what do you think your, your ultimate dream position is like after, um, after point park masters and everything like that? Yeah. Uh, I've been a huge pens fan since I was a kid. Yeah. So that's basically been the place I wanted to work. Mm -hmm. So it sucked when the internship ended a little early Mm -hmm. and the position I was going to apply for got canceled, but that's kind of where I want to be uh, working in, in PR for them. Mm -hmm. Um, the people in the department there were great. They do great stuff. Um, and I mean, sometimes, you know, when you want to get into pro sports, you don't always start where you want to. Right. Um, you work, you know, you just have to work hard, get your name up there, maybe go up the hierarchy a little bit somewhere else. So then maybe one day you can return to where you want to be. But, um, you know, I love Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has done so much for me, uh, and we're a great sports city. So, Mm -hmm. Um, probably working for the Penguins or Steelers is where I want to be. And I think getting two masters is going to help towards that Mm -hmm. and more experience working in athletics, which I'm doing. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the next goal is after these two years, hopefully land at one of those pro teams. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's my goal right now. Yeah. Is it like, is it like, have you ever heard of other people where you in a position like, like that you're trying to pursue, is it? Do you ever have the opportunity to go to like maybe like the Penguins per se? Like I'm just using an example. Like mm-hmm. don't necessarily have an opening or something like that, or they're not looking for that position. So you go somewhere else first. Is that like a thing where it's like a different team, whether it's minor or whether it's I don't know, like a different city or state or anything like that? How, how does that? Is it always the same? I mean, it's the same. Is it the same job from team to team essentially? Like everybody has a similar PR type of group. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much every sports team, they're gonna have a PR. Yeah. department some are smaller than others um i'm doing some stuff right now with a website called pittsburgh soccer now mm-hmm. so i'm at some riverhounds games and i believe they just have one guy their yeah. pr department but the penguins it was like three people plus the ga so four yeah. people um and with covid and stuff departments are probably going to be small in general yeah so most sports teams around the country they're going to have you know three four five people whatever it is maybe just two people yeah. in their pr department um so it's tough you really have to differentiate yourself it really for any department in sports too maybe not as much as in sales like some some sports teams have like 50 people in their sales department right um it's still tough to get in though but a lot depends too on the sport you want to get into Mm -hmm. say you like for sure want to make it to the mob one day work for a baseball team you're probably going to start off in the minors there's so many minor league teams with Mm -hmm. baseball yeah so it's a good idea to get in there before um 
having the credentials to work for the pro team. Yeah. But uh, for some other sports, it's a little different. Right. But, you know. Right now, I, I've seen, uh, I think it's, I don't know if it was on LinkedIn, Facebook. Are, have you been writing for, for yeah. Riverhounds? So, like, what's, how does that, does that, like, is that almost like a freelance thing that you can kind of do on the side or what is that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's not specifically for the river hounds. It's for this website called Pittsburgh soccer. Gotcha, now. Gotcha. But yeah, we, we cover um, the river hounds games. So like I'll update the live blog, I'll watch the game and mm-hmm. uh, update it. Sometimes, sometimes someone else does it, mm-hmm. but uh, we actually had a meeting last night about uh, working on covering the high school sports games. Um, hmm. You know, if they happen, hopefully yeah. they do. So we're working to, cover some of those games and maybe get some zoom calls with the coaches and players. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that would be really nice because uh, the parents aren't going to be able to probably come to every game right. with the rules and stuff. So if they're able to see us broadcast the games and talk about them or write about them, they probably really appreciate it. So yeah. I think that'll be cool. Yeah. That seems like a really nice alternative to like a very strange scenario that we find ourselves in, right? Where people is that I'm not familiar with that right now. Like where are they at as far as, do you know, like, probably going to be no fans at those high school games and and stuff or Uh, if they happen they well some of the counties are different uh like allegheny county we're still the most strict county i think yeah but like westmoreland and washington county i think and like butler county i think the restrictions are a little less Mm. um yeah i don't know like they talked about indoor i think like 50 only how do you do a volleyball game both teams like or like 20 people yeah. plus the coaches like i don't even know how you get a volleyball game done yeah there those there's no way there's going to be fans yeah. but outside if they're going to allow it like i think i've heard 100 fans mm-hmm. i've heard 250 fans hmm. but then you know obviously i would say the parents are priority but like i don't know how are they going to stop like some random people who want to go yeah but at the same time though high school kids probably aren't going to be interested to go if they can't have their student section and right yeah so it'll probably just be parents ending up at these games, if anything. Yeah. 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 It's, it's interesting. I don't, I don't know. It's just a, it's just such a, such a weird time with all that going on. And yeah, I don't know. Um, hopefully it gets all back to normal sooner than <laughs> later <Yeah. laughs> for just for like everyone's sake. But that is again, though, like I said, a really, a really cool idea to make, Honestly, I think it has multiple benefits. I think it definitely helps the parents and everybody and the fans, like you said, but also kind of probably will make if if it's done almost like a like a pseudo ESPN type thing. It could be really cool for the players as well. Like they're kind of like on the internet, they're on yeah. you know whatever you know different sites and stuff like that, and um, just all over social media with the with more of a focus on recording and broadcasting rather than just like the actual live event. I think that could kind of mm-hmm. be pretty cool. I'm very interested in like the actual process of all this because like, you know, we've talked before. I'm like, I'm not like a super heavy duty, like into sports. Like I'll watch penguins. I'll watch, you know, Pittsburgh Steelers on occasion and stuff like that. But like, you know, I really like how like in your position and like PR for, for the penguins, for instance, I like how those two worlds collide, like technology, media, and all of that connect with sports. Because I think that truthfully, I think that that piece of it, like most things makes it so much more entertaining. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like if you go to a penguin game and you don't see like the, you know, like all the the lights and like the displays and like the graphics and everything like that, you know, I mean, you can see it right now. I've 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 caught a couple of these um these games or clips just from uh what they're doing in Toronto and I uh, think yeah. Edmonton, I guess, yeah, Toronto yeah. Edmonton. Like we're like <laughs> they're they're actually having fun with it. You know, they're like yeah. making jokes <laughs> on the board and shit like that and it's like it's like it, like that brings out like a little bit more of you know sports are obviously what you're there for but like the that secondary like entertainment factor and like just all that i just i like i appreciate that so like yeah right now with your with your current position and even like if you forecasted like into the future what are some of the things that like you and the pr team like actually does like on a day to day and like the things that they handle like like very tangibly um pr specifically um relating to like college and pros um obviously gathering stats is the number one most important thing mm-hmm. um is that literally like you're counting shots uh well yeah so like in the uh, for for just college athletics you stat keep 
So -hmm. there's someone who inputs and then there's usually like one or two people that are calling out stuff. Mm. I was usually the input person. Gotcha. Um, so how does that actually work? Like, like walk me literally through that. Is there literally like, like for a hockey game, I guess we can use, is there literally like somebody like you're on, on the keys, like you're Mm -hmm. on the computer or whatever. And then somebody is like saying, okay, Crosby shot. (laughs) Like, is that, is that how it goes? Or like, what's the actual, basically, um, I, we didn't do any of that uh, in the pros. It's different. Like the professionals, organizations, they have like an actual, uh, like their, what what are they called? Um, basically like off, oh yeah, they called them uh, off ice officials. Okay. Yeah. So there's like a, we had to go in there though and get like the stat sheets from them, gotcha. which we would then distribute to the media members so they can look at the stats and talk about them and stuff. Gotcha. Um, they do that. But yeah, like in athletics, it, it's kind of what you're saying, like, mm-hmm. Uh, I input it a lot for basketball. Mm-hmm. So Paul, the guy I worked with, he would yell out, you know, like 22 uh, shot rebound, 33. Like you have to yell out numbers and stuff like yeah. that. Um, there's different uh, softwares you can use. There's so many. There's DAX stats, NCAA live stats, mm-hmm. um, Presto sports. Um, so I, I've used like pretty much all of them. NCAA live stats are, is the best though. Mm-hmm. This company called genius created them. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so most of the sports teams around the country are starting to use it for yeah. basketball. They just made one for ice hockey. Hmm. I want to learn how to do that so I could maybe help, uh, get paid to cover games around the city for that. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it, it's really fun. Like you just watch the game and input stuff and yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. Hmm. So, so how does, so like you mentioned there, like, let's say that you, you used, you figured out how to use the, um, just learned how to use the ice hockey one. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like if you did that, how does, is there like, is there like an organization that does like, like, I don't want to call it youth, but like, is it collegiate? Is it high school? Like, um, level ice hockey that you could, that you could go to those games and you could input stats for, is there like an organization that like, would handle that and like would pay you? like independently to kind of do all that um it, it's basically like uh, i got paid by duquesne for instance to okay. to um yeah it was men's and women's basketball i covered a couple games for them mm-hmm. so i kind of met them because uh duquesne was playing some of their home games at la roche um because yeah. they were renovating their gym mm-hmm. so i kind of met the associate athletic director and the sids there that way mm-hmm. they're great people yeah so it was really cool to do that yeah so like a college team uh it, it's cool they're it's almost like a cult people who do yeah. stats yeah. in Pittsburgh. Like once you're known that you can do it, you'll get called upon. It's just oh, really? getting into that cult kind yeah. of. Yeah. Um, so there's like a huge email list. Like I almost right before COVID did a basketball tournament for IUP and that was going to be awesome. It was like yeah. a two day thing, but then COVID hit, right. they canceled. This was literally like the first week everything started yeah. shutting down. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you kind of just get on that email list and, uh, reach out to people and so the colleges pay you to do it um but at la roche i was basically just doing it for free hmm. but it was fun you know i love yeah. doing it i love being at every game i could and doing it yeah. and getting the experience hmm. yeah. interesting so it's like you're almost establishing like so that you said there's like a huge email list of people that that do the same thing like statisticians keep stats and everything like that yeah. that's really cool that like you're you're a part of the cult <laughs> yeah 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 it's like the one cult i'm a part of just us nerds who love inputting stats and <laughs> yeah. do, do most of those people just do that or like with you so like you like uh, obviously that's something that's like very like specific to kind of what you're doing and things that you like to do mm-hmm. as you would move forward like what else would your would your um almost like we were saying like your day-to-day type thing be so it could be keeping stats and then like are you also involved with like making the creative and the media and all that sort of stuff is that something that you're interested in or yeah and and also writing obviously right yeah 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 um sticking with the social media stuff obviously social media is huge yeah and that's changed the sid position completely over the past 10 years Mm -hmm. so yeah i was actually working on that uh stuff today with my boss at point park Mm -hmm. uh this website called uh what was it? box out sports yeah so it has like templates already made uh-huh. and so we kind of just go in change the colors up put in photos of players and stuff really cool so we can you know tweet out or make instagram posts like there's actual templates of like an instagram story like tall right. thin ones yeah. and then there's the bigger wide ones you tweet out uh-huh. like the player of the game player of the month kind of templates it's really cool uh-huh. um 
And specifically, like at the Penguins, it was important for us to gather certain statistics that they then tweet out, like, Mm -hmm. you know, Sidney Crosby's on a 25-game point streak, this many goals assists, or whatever. Um, And then, yeah, with the writing, uh, write like a ton of the post-game stuff, uh, statistics, more of those, game notes. We would always send out game notes to the media, like stuff that happened literally from that game that is important and vital for people to put in their articles Mm -hmm. and yeah since i was a kid too i've always loved writing about sports um i started up a blog on my own years ago that i was just Hmm. doing for fun uh not anymore though since like i've been writing for places yeah but yeah i love the writing aspect and the stats part and so that's why i love pr because it's like a combination of those things i can work for a team while also writing doing the stats that kind of fun stuff I mean, I would love to write for, you know, like a big newspaper Mm -hmm. or a website like The Athletic, um, Mm -hmm. which is like the number one sports website basically now. Mm -hmm. I would love to do that because you get to interview the players and stuff, Mm -hmm. which is cool. But um, working for the team is what's important to me, which like I'm really passionate about. So I would love to be a media reporter. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. So for team's cool. If you... If you are in that, like, okay, so if you're working for the team in PR, Mm -hmm. then you're the one like gathering the stats and everything like that, obviously, like, and you're, and you're pulling all that data and you're, and you're writing different things. You mentioned in there that you're sending out like game notes to the media. Is that places like, like Pittsburgh media companies, like, like newspapers and, and news stations and all Mm -hmm. that, or how do, or do they come to you? How does that work? Cause like the picture that I'm thinking, that I'm thinking of, right, is, when you're in like after a game, like you said, like with a lock, like in a locker room or something like that, and you see mm-hmm. all those microphones or recorders or whatever, like up yeah. to Crosby, like are those all like different news stations and different media outlets that come to the players and come to the game to get the, the information? Is there anything involved like with the Penguins PR there or is that like a totally different? How does that all like, you know, come together? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, because if you're really not there, then you you don't get fully how it, how it goes down. Right, yeah. I didn't either until, you know, finally working there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, way up high, like you've been to a Pence game, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, the booths way up high mm-hmm. were like Lemieux's at. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we were in, uh, me and the other interns and game day people, we had our own little booth on the right side, which was cool. So we got to see the ice from way up there. There's also big screens up there. Mm-hmm. And then at, at the bottom, there's the media row. It's like, a hundred some seats. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have people from every single website, every newspaper, both home and away teams. Sometimes there's uh, some of the players who have been scratched are up there. Hmm. Some other people, part of the organizations. uh, And then all the booths of like the radio people, um, the GMs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So before the game, we pass out like who's starting everything that goes to everybody up there, Mm -hmm. everybody. So it's uh, when we have to do it quick too. Um, And then right after the first period's over, boom, got to send those stats out. But during the game, you know, we'd be uh, paying attention to, like, who scores. Okay, now that guy's on a goal streak or, you know, different kind of things. Um, And then so then after the game, you know, everyone rushes down to the locker rooms. We're usually already down there. And me and the other interns and game day people, we would actually record, like, as if we were media. Mm -hmm. We didn't interview them at all, but we would record – um, cause then we save those, uh, we save that and then send it out to everybody just in case they like missed, um, mm. some of the interviews, like, cause you know, if you're a media reporter, you can't interview every single player all at once. Right. So you might miss out on another player. Interesting. Um, and then there's people, there's a couple of people that work in the Penguins organization that do, uh, interview and stuff. So they have their own content that they put out on the Penguins website. Mm-hmm. That's like specifically, uh, that's Sam and Michelle. They're terrific. They're great. Mm-hmm. They've been there for like a decade or something like that. Mm-hmm. They're both awesome, great people. So, um, yeah, I, I always say for people, if they watch the Penguins, they're like, if you don't want to pay money for articles, just go to the Penguins website. Cause you're going to get great content there from yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's super interesting to me. Cause I'm trying to put together all these pieces in my head of, like from multiple perspectives, right? Like the, not just the marketing perspective, cause that's what a lot of that is, right? You're just, it's content, content, content mm-hmm. of like the players, the games, um, like you said, the stats, everything like that. You're trying to put all of that out there and you're trying to put it out like on different platforms, you know, 
and it's just i'm trying to so I'm always, I'm always very like structure oriented in a way, but like yeah. there's like so much going on there. Like just yeah. the picture that you painted of like, and, and the stuff that you see on TV, like where you have a bunch of, you know, recorders held up to like Crosby or Malkin or whoever. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then you guys are also trying to record that, which made a lot of sense to, you know, almost like as a backup and just like, cause you want the content too. I'm trying to think of it almost from a business perspective, right? Yeah. Like as the penguins, you would probably want the words Crosby, Malkin, Gensel. Like you probably want those out there as much as possible. Yeah. Right? Just because like more awareness for your brand, your players, sure. your you know, everything like that. So you probably want that on, you know, your website, Trib, Post Gazette, like wherever, mm-hmm. and all of those people are there. So you probably want to make it as simple as possible for them to get that information. Mm-hmm. You know? So like that's why, you know, like even your position, you know, as like a game day intern and everything mm-hmm. like that, you were making, you're almost like a, you're almost like working for the Penguins, but you're also kind of working for them in a way, like yeah, the, the media, exactly. like you're kind of like the yeah. liaison almost. Exactly. That's the perfect word for it. Yeah. Liaison. Interesting. Yeah. You're like the liaison between both and you're just making sure both can do their job at the same time. So interesting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's a, that's a really good way to, to kind of bring that all together then. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So like what. So like in that, what what would you say like what was the hardest part of like just maybe game day or just like that that whole position there? Because I feel like that would be kind of stressful. I I know that most. I mean, when you do it a bunch of times, you know, mm-hmm. different home games. Also, did you ever have to travel? No. Uh, the the people who work there full time get to. Mm-hmm. Uh, they kind of like take turns on who's going for yeah. which trip and stuff, which is really cool for them. But yeah, not at gotcha. not at in. Not as interns. Okay. Yeah. And then when when you don't have game days, is the job kind of the same? You're just kind of like gathering stats. Well, not, obviously not gathering stats like from those games, but like trying to just put together the stuff from um, the games past and then also writing just more and stuff like that. Or how does that how does that kind of go? What's the day to day there? Yeah. Um, for us interns, like we were basically just home games. Mm-hmm. We came in a couple other days. Yeah. But like not too too much. Um, it was kind of like some miscellaneous things that we'd have to do, mm-hmm. like maybe make an Excel spreadsheet of like some prospects or something that are going to a camp. Mm-hmm. So something like that gets sent out to media members. Yeah, something like that. But um, for like the full time people, it's the same thing. Like um, before I probably should have mentioned earlier, unless I did, I don't know. Hmm. Uh, for every home and away game, each team like they have like their game notes right uh like a huge packet of every player all these different stats and stuff so and that's put together by you guys yeah okay yeah and the broadcasters use a lot of that stuff too like where we really have like specific key stats like a section of that Mm -hmm. the broadcasters talk about a lot of that stuff Mm -hmm. so it is so imperative you do not screw up (laughs) like it it happens obviously like you know everyone types stuff off sometimes but yeah like you don't want someone announcing like Sidney Crosby has three goals in 10 games when it's actually like six goals in 10 games. Yeah. Like that would Who just gets suck. pissed there. Uh, I mean, everybody, I feel, yeah. uh, but I, I mean, it's not like, uh, I don't think any of us had any big screw ups, you yeah. know? So, uh, I mean, it's rare that a player is going to find out about yeah, yeah, all yeah. that, you know, but yeah. you just don't want to make the broadcast or anyone look stupid. But right, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of just on you for doing that wrong. I, I hear but I, I don't think that really happens too much, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just imperative. You don't have right. anything wrong. Yeah. I would just think, I mean, obviously you're ga- gathering stats all the time and like trying to, trying to funnel all that data. I mm-hmm. mean, other than it just being a lot of numbers, which, yeah. <laughs> which could get confusing, I suppose. Yeah. It's like math. It's, yeah. it's an easy screw up. It yeah. can happen. But, yeah. 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 But I guess as long as you're careful and stuff is, was there a lot of stress and I mean, you know, even moving forward, do you think there's like a lot of stress in that just because it's like game day type thing? I've, I've been in those situations where it's like events, you mm-hmm. know, and like you're handling different things like PowerPoint presentations or whatever. That's obviously yeah. different. But, you know, what I'm saying like stuff like on the on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, do you just get used to it, you think? Or is there is there actual other parts that aren't as as fun? Yeah, um, I don't really get stressed. Um, that's just me. I mean, yeah. other people are different. Um, we've all obviously worked with people who get a little more overwhelmed than others. People mm-hmm. handle things differently. Yeah. Um, I would, I would never say I'm like careless though. Like I, I take it seriously, but there's been chances before where like, 
I've done stats and then all of a sudden my people that are calling out to me are gone. <laughs> well, <laughs> you just have to look at the game yourself and yeah. start focusing more. Um, I've had to do that before or, you know, there was a screw up somewhere and you just, yeah. you just handle it. So yeah. I, I never, I never got stressed wherever job I've been at, you know, like it's yeah. fun. It's, um, I'm passionate about it. So I think, yeah. I think when you love what you do, yeah. you know, it, it's, you're not as stressed, but like, you know, I remember the days in the past, like working at a restaurant and someone yells at you and like yeah. that's a, then that's kind of stressful. Cause it's like, you don't even really want to be there in the first place. You're just there right. for your paycheck. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. It's a different, different, uh, experience when you don't, like you said, when you don't want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Is it literally like where you're like, I'm trying to again, picture the, st the, the stat input. Is it, li are you literally like, cl just like clicking like number 16 rebound? Like, is that, is that kind of how it works? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the it's, well, NCAA live stats is awesome. It's so yeah. advanced. So it would have the numbers of the players out on the laptop. Yeah. So, uh, NCAA live stats is all mouse based. You're on yeah. your mouse, just clicking each number. Yeah. You click where they shoot the ball at. Like there's a, Oh, uh, like an actual shot chart thing. Yeah. Like, like oh, okay. on the laptop, it has the court. So you literally wow. like click where each turnover happens, where the oh my God. shots at. Yeah. And it's great. So the coaches, when we print out those stats, they see the shot chart. So they That's see. That's crazy. Is this, yeah. this is for collegiate level. Yeah. Collegiate. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, obviously it's a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Would you do something like that for high school? I mean, obviously that one's NCAA, but like, have you done things like that for high school or does it only, does it stop at like collegiate level? Yeah. It just starts at collegiate high school's. They don't, they don't fit in the budget to do all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 I, I, I kind of wish they would, though. It would be sick. Yeah. But, yeah, you got high schools that, like, barely have enough money to pay for, like, one head coach. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And is it just, is it all, like, how does the divisions work? Is it, like, even if, like, you're D3 or whatever, you still get that? I don't I don't know how any of that works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, D1 is more likely going to have the money right. to use. Um some of the more updated software. Mm -hmm. um, the, also, the NCAA, though, makes rules. Like, I, I think it's actually this upcoming year for basketball. I could be wrong, but, like, this year, everyone has to use the NCAA live stats. They can't use Presto. They can't mm -hmm. use DAC stats um, or Stat Crew. Um, Stat Crew was usually used a lot for basketball. Yeah. Um, and I've worked with people that know the Stat Crew callouts uh -huh. better than the NCAA live stats. Yeah. That was some of the people with Duquesne. So they'd be yelling me the Stat Crew ones, but like, yeah. I would know the difference. So I'm like, okay, I get what you're saying. What's the difference <laughs> there? Like, is it is uh, just in verbiage or like? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, cause it's, it's with what you type. So like rebound, it's like RD 22 rebound 22 or, mm. But NCAA live sets, like you're just kind of saying, like rebound 22. Uh, uh, I can't think of everything off the top right, of my yeah. head. If I had it in front of me, I'd be yeah. able to like say it more. Yeah, but. no, it's just it's just wild. Like, yeah, it's. I mean, there's so many things like. So like, uh, you're the, you're the first person that I've met that like you know is is part of that cult. We'll say right. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's like it's cool. It's cool that like there's just so many things, and especially from like these episodes and just different you know conversations that you know everybody has from from time to time. It's like there's so many things that you don't even realize. Like you mm -hmm. don't realize that somebody like has to do that. Like you just take all that shit for granted <laughs> most of the time. You yeah. Know? Like that's that's so cool though, because like that's like you're literally like without that, that's an integral part of, yeah. of whether it's collegiate sports or or pens or whatever like that. You you wouldn't have most of the data, all of it actually, if yeah. you, if you didn't have statis statisticians and everything like that. So that's yeah, good. it's it's definitely necessary, but yeah. um. Yeah, it's fun. You're you're kind of just in the background. Not not too many people, you know, pay yeah. attention to you. But it it's fun. I kind of like being in the quiet part too. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be the head of everything and right. the face of stuff. I yeah. So like, and I guess that kind of goes into the might somewhat answer the next question. But the here's the part that I'm interested in mm -hmm. because of your uh, background and your interests and your passions and all that. So we're talking about. You said you used to have a blog. So that, yeah. that's cool. Just like as something to get your feet wet when you're younger and now, you know, pursuing this path of probably, you know, working for either the pens, you know, obviously doing stuff with the river hounds now and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How does it all work? Like if you wanted to, or maybe, you know, people that are already doing this, like somebody that would work like for, for instance, in the PR department at the penguins, could they also do something for themselves like we, we talked a little bit, I think before we went live here and, and I think we mentioned it once or twice, like a podcast. Yeah. Right? Talk to me a little bit about that. 
like your interest in that, if you still have that interest to like where, where you're kind of going with that and we, we can even like, you know, brainstorm on a couple of things if you want, but mm-hmm. how does that all work from what you'd like to do with that? Just any ideas that you have. But the other thing that I'm thinking is, does that blend well with, if you have like an actual job, you know what I'm saying? Like writing for a, for a team, could you also do other things like on the side if, or, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that? Like it's a different brand. How does that work? Yeah, I think it's it's a little tougher. Um, it's different if you you know like we you've seen tons of business people that have their own podcasts. Yeah, do different stuff like they're a CEO of a company, but they go on podcasts. You know, like Elon Musk. Right. Um, you know, in sports, it's a little more hush hush. Um, you you have to be trusted. Um, so that's what what sucks for me, like because um, you know, I want to work for those teams one day and stuff, and um, you just you don't spread terrible information and stuff. And that's kind of what the media does, whether it's sports, politics, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You you want to get all those nitty gritty details and stuff to talk about. So I, I'd love to, you know, start start up my podcast and start doing stuff. But like I can't I don't want to be like a Mark Madden out there making my opinions and yeah. yelling at people and like that, that's just not a good look. You, you you can't be doing stuff like that when you work for a sports organization. Yeah. Um, but I mean like Jim Rutherford, the GM was on a podcast the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, I know people in the industry that have been on podcasts that they're talking about specifically like their job and right, what right. they do and stuff. So it's more of like an educational thing, Yeah. but you don't just straight up go like, well, this is all this stuff that the public yeah. doesn't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I feel that. I think there's there's two sides to that, right? Like you said, like like Jim Rutherford was like on one, just like similar, like you're on yeah. by progress, right? And then if if you wanted to, like like tomorrow, let's mm-hmm. say, right? You know, you got the equipment and everything like that. If you wanted to start a podcast about sports, like I don't know what you know, how you would, how you do it or whatever, but like, you know, mm-hmm. just like sports talk or something like sports talk with, with Jordan. Okay. Yeah. And you wanted to talk about like, make your own little website or, or blog again type thing, but a, also the podcast variant of it. Mm-hmm. And you wanted to talk about like penguins. You wanted to talk about uh, Steelers. You wanted to talk about like sports in general too, like not just the Pittsburgh teams. Mm-hmm. And maybe you wanted to have people on like other people that you know that are interested in sports. And also maybe one day we might've talked about this a long time ago. Like, like mm-hmm. even like, um, you know, interviews with players and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that something that you can do while you're doing all that other stuff? Can you have like a, I, I want to call it like a personal brand, but like a mm. personal show while you're also working for a team or is that not normally how it goes? Uh, I mean like right now, since I'm just like a GA at point park. Yeah. Like I probably could do some stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, if you, if you work for an organization, a sports organization, I don't think you really can yeah create your personal brand you know uh you're not like an athlete as much where you have that personal freedom to yeah. do that kind of thing like juju you know mm-hmm. he's so active on social media right you you can't really be like that and um because it's a bad look on the organization mm-hmm. if if you're saying very provocative things or whatever mm-hmm. it comes back on the organization and then that's how you get fired right uh, so like yeah i mean I don't, it's tough. I mean, uh, a good example is uh, my boss at the Steelers in the marketing department. Great guy. He went to La Roche mm-hmm. too. He's an he's an alum there. Um, I was just talking to him the other day. He has a a new son, Luca. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about like a month or two old baby, uh-huh. but he's already pulling the ladies more, <laughs> more than me. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, Jonathan's great. He he has his own podcast. I don't think he does too much with it now, yeah. but he used to. And I listened to his episodes, and they were real short. They were like five to fifteen minutes. Yeah, like one was great. He was talking about Kobe Bryant and like a lot of his great quotes and just mm-hmm. um, that mama mentality and stuff. Right. But you know, none of his podcasts were about like this is what I do for the Steelers and his, yeah, this yeah. is all this behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, I don't even know if the people in the Steelers organization know he made that. Right. But, um, yeah, but like he's done a good job of getting his name out there in Pittsburgh. You know, he teaches at point park. He's the president of the alumni at La Roche. So it's good to always do things. Um, you know, uh, so he, yeah, he kind of does have his own brand, right. But you just don't, you know, um, spread secrets and yeah, I don't know for sure. Yeah. No, I think, 
and I here's so there's two kind of main reasons that I, like I I kind of like bring that up or like the 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 things that are going through my head when I when I bring that situation or that um, scenario right mm-hmm. and it's I feel like at least from my experience it seems like most of the time when you're working for somebody right you're an employee yeah and you're doing that industry right we'll just say sports media then you can't like it seems like most companies that hire you to do that are not going to want you to do it on your own because of i would say a couple potential reasons one they might think that you're doing it on their time which, yeah. because like you know it's like the same type of work or whatever yeah that's yeah. one thing or whatever but the other thing is like you know it's you're doing you're putting out information per se about or it doesn't even need to be provocative or anything but just like your inf- your opinions on you mm-hmm. know athlete xyz team you know a you know abc or whatever mm-hmm. and you're doing that when you could be doing that on behalf of the organization if that makes sense right yeah i don't that was a tough thing for me because i kind of went through that a little bit like and i was like well i don't want to be held down by you know yeah. a position right but that's the reason that i ask is because like i didn't know if that was something that you you thought of doing one day if that's something that you were interested in like being your own because i also think about like um there's definitely people out there that are almost like they almost have like a personal brand associated with them and all they are is like you know, well they are the reporter in a mm-hmm. sense like they're the like you know you know the people on like espn and you know this yeah. and that at, like adam Scheffner. i don't even yeah, like, yeah follow yeah. him that well but you know what i'm saying like yeah he's a dude he is a dude that reports on sports yeah. and he's verified on twitter right yeah, you know, it's yeah. like <laughs> and it's like it's like i didn't get my shit from espn yeah, or sports yeah. center. Like, yeah. I don't get it from ESPN. I got it from Adam Scheffner. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's mm. interesting to me because that is almost like a little bit of individuality, mm-hmm. right? Where they they were able to say, "All right, well, I work for here. I work for this organization, this station, this you know network or whatever." Mm-hmm. But at the same time, on a lot of like, and I don't know how it works, like, because mm-hmm. I actually think that it's probably somewhat similar to thing that comes to mind is like being like a financial advisor yeah if you're a financial advisor there's only certain shit that you can put on your social media outlets like yeah, it has yeah. to be cleared and i don't know if it's that crazy because it's like you know sports media but I'm, I'm sure like he can't i don't know i mean you just when more people know you you're already in you're already in like a tough spot there because like you like anything that you say is going to be broadcasted to a lot of people but it's just an interesting thing i don't know do you, do you would let me let me let me boil all that down into <laughs> Do you see yourself right now? Do you have any aspirations to be like an Adam Scheffner type thing, where you're like a reporter, mm-hmm. or you're like like part of the media in a sense, and you're bigger than just that organization? You're trying to like do that for yourself as well, or is that kind of mm-hmm. not like in your on your radar? What do you think? Well, well, yeah, it's a good point how you brought up how like you get your news from Adam Scheffner instead of ESPN. Mm-hmm. That that's how it is, and there that's people with fans now. Like they love Juju, they love James Conner. Right. But they don't even like fully love the Steelers. It's like they love those certain players. Right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, specifically working in PR, um, sports media, like I am, like when you're working for a team, yeah, you can't, you can't just be an Adam Scheffner on the side or a Mark Madden. Like, obviously, it'd be cool to do that. I'd love to do that. Mm-hmm. I'd love to have my own um, radio show five days a week like Madden mm-hmm. or. I'd love to be uh, writing for the athletic like Josh Ely and some of these other guys. Mm-hmm. That'd be really cool. But yeah, you can't do that while you're working for a team. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, I, I think it's, it might be hard. Like, I don't know how you really do that. I guess you have to, like you said, you have to stand out. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I know Madden's story a little bit, but like, mm-hmm. you know, you got to write for the Penguins or you have to write for whatever body organization you're doing it and then you have to just consistently like get better throughout that yeah and then maybe one day you can kind of like springboard off that over into your own you know like you know jordan smith talk show or something yeah, like that right, like know. colin coward yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting yeah yeah because that's kind of cool i mean i i i think that's interesting to hear individuals opinions on things like on like on sports like that like like yeah. colin's colin coward's a great um example there because like you know you have your own show and then mm-hmm. you can you can kind of do i'm assuming he has more leeway and you know like and obviously has more control over what he talks about and things like that yeah but again i mean it's probably going to be just mostly like current Mm -hmm. current stuff going on anyway but that's that's a really interesting thing so yeah yeah, maybe maybe one day 
we'll uh we'll see you on espn with your own show uh <laughs> yeah i don't know uh i i'd love that yeah i i was gonna say too i mean i said how i didn't want to bring up politics but like yeah. that is a good point um with how you listen to certain individuals mm -hmm. and like that's how i am if i want to read into anything political yeah um I mean, a lot of people, it's easy to listen to CNN, Fox, MSNBC, like the big companies. You get the immediate alerts. You, you look at the headlines. Right. Um, they tend to be able to grab information quickly. But um, for me, it's like, and, and a lot with sports too, it's like I want to hear the certain people, the certain individuals I trust more right. and listen to. That's why, like, if I really want to learn about someone politically, I'd rather listen to a three-hour podcast of them with joe rogan yeah and then i'm actually really going to learn about them mm -hmm. instead of like the five minute snippet on fox news yeah you know yeah, yeah that's terrible yeah <laughs> it's it's I and mean, it's just it's just so difficult it's so difficult to like actually grasp information nowadays mm -hmm. like real information yeah you know right. because it's like everything is so i don't want to like i don't know if diluted or, or everything is like you know just quick takes you know and like yeah. hot takes and like you know uh, sound bites of of this that and the other thing and like i really love the long form content like Me too. much yeah. like what we're doing here you know it's like you don't get you don't get a full understanding of who somebody is what they stand for politically sports like whatever it doesn't matter mm -hmm. unless you listen to them and actually you know hear their story or hear their you know their side of the argument yeah. or whatever it is and when you're just doing this little these little bullshit like small video clips of like this that this thing that thing and then you have like these um you know these big news heads like saying uh you know this is what happened yada yada i mean both sides of it i mean I, we, we don't need to get like deep into it but you know just regardless um yeah. you know it's tough and i i really i just really it's made me appreciate long form content oh, yeah. so yeah. much more because um it's honestly i think it's i just think it's way way more beneficial and it's not it's not riot inciting you know yeah, like, i mean yeah. like, i mean i just feel like the small stuff just gets people riled up for sure yeah like um if you really want to learn about someone like you got to do your homework and yeah um yeah like that that was with jordan peterson like i remember the first video i watched of him he was like in tears which which he kind of is in a lot of his yeah, stuff yeah he's just such a serious guy yeah um but it, it's great yeah so like the first video i watched i was like oh this guy's interesting um and then, you know, I started listening to his podcast with Rogan and then you listen to his podcast as well, just mm -hmm. the hours and hours and hours of content on YouTube. And then yeah. I read his book and it's just like, I, le I learned more and more and more about this guy yeah. and so many like great and bad stories throughout his lifetime. Um, so I just think like, cause he's someone who I think has been vilified incorrectly by a lot yeah. of people. Um, so it just, that it just... I feel sad for him. Um, and he's been through so much lately. I know too, like yeah. in the past year or so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just fun. Long, long form is, is so much more fun. And Rogan was just, you know, he was the first one to do it pretty much. And that's why he got so successful with it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I applaud him for that because he's got one of the best podcasts out there. Yeah. Yeah. Long form is great. Definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think, I think, uh, Jordan Peterson has had a tremendous effect on me as well. Um, That's good. Yeah. I don't know if, again, I don't read, but <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. like I said, I definitely watched a lot of his lectures. I've lo I've watched a lot of the uh, the um, the content that he has, uh, and you know, like we said, long form content and everything like that. That is, I don't know. That is just um, th there's there's definitely something to be said there because when you bring it all together, I think it's a much better experience than you know, kind of just these little sound bites and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. um, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely a good route. Uh, I think it's, I think it's probably the better way to go yeah, in a agreed. lot of cases. Um, but, um, if we jump over to like, you know, the idea of, you know, podcasting and, and, and we're, and again, we were talking about like the personal brand thing and stuff like that. Um, you know, and Scheffner and all those, and all those <laughs> different type of things. Um, you mentioned, uh, I think it was off air or whatever, but you mentioned like if you wanted to do something, right? Like a show or, um, you know, uh, like starting your own podcast and stuff like that. What is, what is your idea of what you would want to do? And like, just to kind of establish something like that. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously sports would be cool, but you know, we've talked about that, how I can't exactly do that. Yeah. Um, I guess like some sports business stuff I mm -hmm. could. There's some great websites out there called like front office sports. Mm -hmm. They talk about like the business aspects of sports stuff going on, like sponsorship right. deals, mm -hmm. things like that. That's cool. Um, at least I find it cool. Yeah. Some yeah. people might not. <laughs> Somebody always will, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're right. There's, there's a nerd a, for everything. There's an audience out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely some business stuff. Um, I know like the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, they have their own podcasts. Um, mm -hmm. I, I listen to Morning Brew, their their podcast, Business Casual, sometimes. Yeah. It's pretty great. Um, so, yeah, if I were to start a podcast, I'd maybe try to do that. Because, like, reviewing news, talking about it. Because I wouldn't consider myself some expert on stuff. Like, I don't know. I Like, I know a little bit, but I could not sit down for hours and tell somebody, like, this is what stocks you should invest in right. and, like... Um, here's what to do about credit cards and yeah, paying yeah. a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Like, no, I'm no genius. Do not take yeah. <laughs> advice from me on that. Like I might have my opinions on some things, but yeah. Yeah. So, cause I read the wall street journal every day. I'm also a nerd with that. Mm -hmm. So maybe like summarizing those articles, talking about like what's important, um, how it might affect me, how it might affect you. Right. That, that stuff I could maybe get into. That's mm -hmm. what I've thought about a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So business is yeah. like another, like kind of, you know, interest of yours, then you would say, like, would you yeah. say sports and then business and then like also finance to a certain degree? Yeah, I'd say the three of those um, and some some probably like some spirituality stuff too, religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of like my top five of gotcha. stuff. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, very similar. Yeah, I was um, it's actually funny. I was working on like my my website thing or whatever recently and I was I'm trying to put together like sort of a story, right? Like mm -hmm. just because that's something that I'm trying to do. I want to make sure that people understand like, you know, what I'm about and like mm -hmm. if they want to go somewhere, right? Instead of hearing like a five second sound bite <laughs> thing somewhere, they can go somewhere and they, and I would recommend this for everyone. Like, you know, like I said, like I'm kind of, you know, I'm even thinking like for yourself, you know, if you have, if you do that sort of a thing where you have some sort of presence where people can learn more about you, I always think that if you're going to be in any sort of public you know, position whatsoever. Yeah. Somebody might want to learn more about you or you're giving information to people. I always think that that's kind of a cool thing to have because then people will know, people can relate. People yeah. love that story and stuff. So right, yeah. the pillars though, which is what I um, kind of call them, there's like five or so. I think it's, um, I think right now I have health, personal mm -hmm. development, um, relationships, wealth, and spirituality. Okay, cool. So like those are all, you know, very similar to what you just said there. Yeah, those and are I, good. And I think, I think that they all have, you know, their own, you know, it, you know, pillar kind of like in your life that you should kind of focus on. What are, I'm interested in the, in the spirituality, like, like religion one. Is it like meditation and things like that? What are, have, yeah. you, have you inspir experimented with things? Like what's, what's going on there? Yeah, exactly that. Um, meditation, um, that started during that transition period. Yeah. Uh, like sophomore year. I started a little freshman year, but sophomore year i really started to get into that mm -hmm. um so i started meditating every day i still do yeah um hmm, so, really yeah what's your routine on that is it like how long uh i'm not i'm still not great at the routine part yeah. of it because sometimes i do it in the morning like right when i wake up yeah sometimes i don't do it till like after dinner or yeah. like right before bed um sometimes i try to just find like a minute or two like if i'm at work just like close my eyes sit back for a minute and kind of yeah. do it um yeah, sometimes I've med. Usually, it's like a ten minute meditation. I've used the Headspace app a lot. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll turn on music. If I do music, uh, there's a specific album I'll meditate to, mm -hmm. uh, called "Awake" by Tycho. Have mm -hmm. you ever heard of that band? Mm -mm. It's all electronic. There's no singing. Okay. So it's really relaxing that mm -hmm. album specifically. Uh, so it's like close to an hour. So sometimes I'll literally sit outside on my deck or in the grass and I'll listen to that whole album and just oh, wow. meditate through the whole thing. Wow. Um, yeah, it's great. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, been it, meditation has done a lot. It's helped me see the good in everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and really just stay positive and also kind of like even keel, like not too excited, not too angry about stuff. Yeah. Um, which helps my golf game. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I imagine that's a very angry, it makes people very angry. Yeah. <laughs> You're just battling against yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, um, and when I hit a bad shot, you know, I try to chill instead yeah. of like slamming my club on the <laughs> ground, like some yeah. people do. Yeah. yeah. 
I've played it. Uh, I don't actually think I've ever played like 18 holes, but I played par three, and it's not. Yeah, it was. Oh, uh, scaly is probably. Uh, I think it was actually West West Hills when it was still a thing. Oh, okay, I I don't think I've yeah, been to that yeah, one. Yeah, it's, it's okay. like out. I think it's like out Moon or something like that. But oh, yeah, cool. it's just yeah. a little thing. Um, but um, but yeah, it's that's a fun game. I'd actually mm. love to get into that more. But um, yeah, yeah, I did this summer. I started golfing a lot more. Yeah. So I've improved a bit. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I like doing there's it. a there's there's so many things that I want to do, and already yeah. so many things that I've started doing, and and like it's time is just tough. You know, it is. it's like it's it, there's too many there's too many things that I think a lot of us want to fit into our schedule, and like if we're not careful, we're gonna just put too many things in there, and you know nothing's gonna get done. Yeah, right. Which is tough. Um, you know, so so I'm I'm digging the. Uh, the the meditation though and the and the spirituality part of it that's something that I would love to do along with going to the gym more uh, too, because yeah. I because I play uh, ball hockey but I right. but I don't I'm not I'm not doing enough strength training so mm. I feel like that's gonna kind of you know I feel like there's probably some some issues getting ripped will help with yeah hockey. <laughs> maybe yeah. I don't know I don't know but like I think I just I just like to be healthy though yeah you know um like you mentioned earlier like you know never like a partier and stuff like that like I was the same with me so like I never I never got into mm. any of those habits. It's not something that I do, yeah. um, you know, now more as like a, you know, an adult past the collegiate level. So it's like, um, yeah, it's just, I think just establishing good habits. And that's mm. something that I'm trying to do because I've, I've started to notice that like a lot of people in my life, like you just get stuck, mm-hmm. you know, like when you don't, when you're not constantly trying to iterate on what you're doing and, and try to continue to like chase like happiness and just continue to, to be, fulfilled yeah and doing things that you love and trying to tweak the way in which you live i just feel like it just gets really shitty really fast Mm -hmm. because you start to get like pessimistic yeah so you do i don't know i'm liking the uh the idea of like like you said the whole meditation spirituality thing Mm -hmm. um you know as we said those pillars um you know what are what are some of the things like um like finance wise maybe like is that is that like we were talking again, like what were some of the things that some of the influences that you've had that have been, you know, some people or entities or whatever, who's influenced you in that space? Yeah. Um, we talked about before Graham, uh, yeah. Stefan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I can't say I've listened to him a ton, Yeah. but a little bit just cause real estate does, uh, intrigue me. Mm-hmm. Passive income is yeah. important. Yeah. I mean, you look at the U S economy, mm-hmm. like, the the two biggest things is housing market and the stock market. Like yeah. those are two of the best ways to get rich. Yeah. Is either be an investing God or like yeah. know how to flip houses and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. Cause if I feel like if you can do real estate on the side, right. um, but the people that become huge millionaires like him, like they just go, go all out on mm-hmm. it. And, you know, I want to be working in sports, so I don't really know if I can go all out on the whole real estate game. Mm -hmm. But I've looked for, like, simpler uh, things, like Stefan's talked about, and with some of my friends, we've talked about getting a uh, duplex Mm -hmm. and renting out the other side. Yep, house hacking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that way you're basically living for free. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, is a duplex where you absolutely want to live? No, but... You got to, because I mean, like, is there super nice duplexes? Not really. Like, mm-hmm. they're tiny and shitty for yeah, the most part. Yeah, yeah. But, like, that's a sacrifice you make for the long-term goal mm-hmm. so that one day you do. And, and then maybe one day if I do have millions and millions of dollars, mm-hmm. I, yeah. I hope I do, yeah. then maybe I own, like, a whole apartment complex or something. Right. And, you know, yeah. I don't know. Obviously, not right now. I can't do that. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's stepping stones. I, I'm, yeah. Um, you know, my buddies. There's a there's a group of us that like want to do that type of thing as well. Yeah. Uh, maybe not all together per se, but like uh, a couple of my buddies just bought a house oh, cool. in uh, in like Lawrenceville, and I don't okay. know if they're gonna live in it or not. I think, and like I don't know if they were gonna whatever. But the point is that like. You know, there's so many, there's actually a ton of different methods I think you can do in, in the real estate industry as well. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's uh there's a Burr method and that's kind of like the only one I know, but there's a bunch of other ones, you know, whether you're flipping or whether you're investing or whatever, but the house hacking one is really interesting. I've definitely thought about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then honestly, you know, you just try to like gra- exactly what Graham has done where he took, you know, 
he took one step to get a property and now he has like, I think he has properties like even in different areas and stuff like that, yeah. just wherever you can find a deal. And then you have tenants in there. Of course you have to, you know, occasionally re revamp the place. Yeah. Um, but no, I think that that is, that's one of the gold mines for, for passive income. If you can get the good deal, if you're in good place and the, and the uh, market continues to trend upward, um, yeah. you, you always want land. You want, you want yeah. real estate. You Property's want important. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, that's that's I'm on the same wavelength there as well. I I'd definitely love to do that mm -hmm. in the future. Um I would personally and I was that's funny it's funny we bring this up because I've been looking at um I followed a lot of investing and uh finance um like influencers or whatever like on on YouTube and I don't watch too much of the content anymore because I feel like I am very saturated in it. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're probably at like I don't know everything, nearly everything, but like, yeah. but like all the basics and stuff like that. You get to a point, I feel like with some things and finance is one of them. It's like, okay, you can only be told so many times to like invest in your Roth and do that yeah, sort the of fundamentals, stuff. Yeah. yeah. But once you have the fundamentals, you're way ahead of so many other people. Yeah. Cause they don't even know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then there's like another upper echelon where you, if you put in like a lot of work, you could absolutely kill it. You yeah. know, like in, in and a lot of it's kind of like, I don't want to call it luck, but like with stocks and stuff, yeah. you know, you probably shouldn't try to time the market. A lot of people say that, but that is ultimately what it ends up coming down to. Like you need to try to be able to see patterns and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If you really want to take it to the next level or you just buy and hold. Yeah. You know? yep. so, so, um, but it's interesting that, you, that we're, that we're talking about this because I would love to get more, I'd love to dedicate more time to, focusing on trading stocks mm -hmm. and more so like options and things along those yeah, lines yeah. because I just feel that it could be like a cool experience and obviously just make money mm -hmm. with money. Yeah, you know? yeah. Which is always better than just like, you know, using your time for money. Yeah. That was right. one of the biggest problems I had when, when I was at like a job and like I was doing things for other people and I was building it up and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't like, I didn't get like any personal equity too much out of it. Yeah. It was tough. Yeah, so. making money without like really doing too much work is nice. Yeah, just yeah. trading, <laughs> just trading time for money is is always is always a difficult one for me. Yeah. So, I don't know, but um, but no, that's good stuff. Um, maybe um, I would I would love to. Well, I'm I'm anxious to see like where the where the whole podcast and stuff and everything like that goes. You have like like we talked about it. You have equipment and everything, right? Yeah. So like, um. Do you do you think that's gonna start soon, or do you think like what's like with your with your current schedule and everything mm -hmm. like that? Obviously, it's pretty packed with. Yeah, I recently thought about it, and it's like I don't even have enough time to obtain the information I like to read daily, mm -hmm. right? Like the newspaper and like websites I read right. from, and you know, wanting to fit in workouts, meditation, and all that. Right, it's tough. So the way I've been seeing it is kind of like. Let me get through this two-year grind of grad school because mm -hmm. um, I, I plan to join some clubs here soon, too. I've been talking to some people, mm -hmm. some clubs with the school because I like to get involved. Yeah, um, I'm a member of the North Regional Chamber as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm about to hop on the alumni board at La Roche as well. Wow. So it's like, nice. yeah, you yeah it's like six, seven different things yeah. plus like, you know, your personal stuff like yeah. the working out and stuff. So yeah. maybe after these two years, I'll I'll get it going. Yeah. Um, Gotta make sure you update the LinkedIn. Yeah, with all that jazz. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I did the other day. I yeah. I posted I posted uh, my new position. Yeah, yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, I uh, just as a total side tangent, like with all that and like LinkedIn, I love LinkedIn because it's like such an easy way to make like almost like a little online resume. Obviously, of yeah. all your like work experience and like somebody like you. I wasn't really me in, in college. Like I wasn't in like a ton of different like groups and, and, and clubs and all that sort of stuff. Cause I didn't live on campus and mm -hmm. I don't know, whatever it wasn't, wasn't networking enough at that time. But for somebody that's taken advantage of that, if you just, I know it's just stuff written there, but mm -hmm. you know, people underestimate, I think how cool I've just, I've just seen it at every turn. People really underestimate the value of just having a place where if somebody wants to learn about you, yeah. they can learn about you. Right. And that's what I'm and that's what I'm trying to do and that's what I'm trying to tell like everybody else to do too because like if you're one of those people that want to be I don't want to say like an influencer. I hate that it's a, <laughs> it's a fucking stupid word sometimes, yeah, but like you know, it, yeah. But you know, it's it's just if you're at all like 
you know, public or you want to, or you have opinions that you think other people might find Mm -hmm. valuable. I just think it's really cool to have like, you know, even something like a, you know, LinkedIn profile where you have all those different things like, oh, well, he was, you know, part of the alumni club at La Roche. That's pretty dope. I went to La Roche, you know, and you make connections yeah. almost from those so those things. And I think that that's um, extremely valuable long term mm-hmm. when you're trying to do things like that. Yeah, I think LinkedIn is huge. Yeah. Um, you know, unless you're some entrepreneur just doing stuff on your own, like if you're trying yeah. to work for companies and stuff, LinkedIn, yeah. you have to have that. You have to put stuff on there, be active yeah. on it. Um, I also think email is underrated. Yeah. Like so many people with internships, they think like they have to wait for this job site to apply on it or whatever. Yeah. Like, no, literally uh-huh. go to the company websites, find people's emails. If they're not on there, like call, uh-huh. call them, you know, or if you know a friend that knows people or whatever yeah. and get emails and literally just email them your resume and like portfolio and yeah. stuff you have such a better chance of getting a job that way. Yeah. Um, and I think creating a website is huge too. Mm-hmm. My boss at the Penguins, yeah. um, he was like, you need to create that. Um, I still haven't done it, but cause I got this position. So like I'm chilling for two years, Yeah. but within the end of the two years, I want to have that with like tons of my work, all my work experiences, my yeah. resume, some photos, stuff that like, it shows you're there. It shows you're doing it. Right. And that's really key in sports. It's like, yeah, Oh, he's actually there doing it. Yeah, like an online portfolio and just everything that you've done. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe get some business cards with like the link to the website, your mm-hmm. LinkedIn link as well, and then like your title. Yeah. Yeah, I need to I need to get on that. Do you, is that is that all just like your personal stuff then at that point or is that almost like like I'm just trying to envision even like a business card there. Is that just like just almost like a how do you put it? Like if you go to a job interview type thing, just like a little like, hey, here you go. Like this mm-hmm. is more information. Go check it out type thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, business cards are, are great. Um, they're they're probably not used as much now as they used to be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, you can get them cheap. Like I think there's websites where it's like you can get 500 for like 20 bucks. Yeah. So um, and you're probably not even yeah. going to hand out 500. I think there, I, I was also going to say uh, a second ago, I think that when you were saying about the email thing too, I would agree with that too. Like just, just even shooting somebody in an email like yeah. straight up is, is probably underrated. Yeah. But I think there's even sites that I've heard of where, you know, if you don't know like somebody's email for, for instance, but you know that they work for this company or that company or something, I think there's even places where you can like put in like their name and mm-hmm. it might even return it almost like a, like a Google search, but for emails, oh, okay. which is interesting. I, I'd have to look into that. I've never actually that's used cool. it. But that's um that's definitely a valuable resource for somebody that's trying to reach out to people at different like companies and stuff like that. Yeah. Interesting. Definitely. Yeah. So obviously over on Instagram, which at the end of this, we're gonna make sure that we put all the uh the links in the description, everything like that for, cool. for Twitter and everything <laughs> like that. Cause we wanna make sure that that we start you early on uh your journey to Adam Scheffner land. Oh, no, but um yeah. but I saw recently, uh I think it was on Instagram or something like mm-hmm. that, you um you were uh selling your sports cards yeah so i am i'm interested in that uh the origin story i was wondering if it had anything to do with gary v and yeah. and then also like what what has been your experience so far why are you selling them and all that yeah uh i mean i've been into collecting sports cards since i was a kid like like most yeah. other guys growing yeah. up um i had so many when i was a kid and then it just like fell off like you know High school and most of college, I wasn't really into it at all. Yeah. Just barely bought cards here and there. Um, And really, sports cards in the country were not huge during my lifetime up until now. Um, It was big, you know, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, like um, 80s, and then 90s and early 2000s. It just sucked. It it just started to get way overpriced, way too many cards produced. So the value was just not there. Mm Um. And then I started hearing Gary Vee talk about it, yeah. um, and he's like, it's huge. It's the next sort of sneaker flipping kind of thing. Like, um, So many people are getting back into it, and he's had such a huge influence on the market. It's crazy. Yeah. He posts like one photo, and all those cards go way up in price. Oh, my gosh. Like, yeah, it's insane because I wanted to buy uh, the certain cards, but I was like waiting to get money sent on my debit card, yeah. and I was going to buy the exact card that he bought like t- like 50 of 
Yeah. And then he buys it, and then, like, I didn't get my chance to buy it, and then the next day it goes, like, the the KD rookie card goes from, like, $300 to, like, $900. Oh, my gosh. And it's like I could have made 600 bucks if I bought one of them. Jeez. But, uh, yeah, so I wanted to start getting into it, and what I realized is basketball was actually the biggest sport of what um, – um, which I think is honestly um, the top league in the country, sort of, yeah. just because they connect so well with people. Yeah. Um, so, and I've never been like a huge basketball fan. I like basketball, but just never watched it too much. Yeah. Um, so I was like, all right, I got to invest in some basketball cards here. That seems to be the play. Um, but I need to do tons of research. Uh, so I spent like literally over a month researching before I uh purchased i was on ebay like every day looking at stuff hmm. um listening to videos of gary v and others talking about it doing tons of research on players where i'm like okay i know this card i'm going to make money mm-hmm. like i'm not going to lose money so um i did my research and you know i only have so much money and i only wanted to spend so much money right so i bought luka Doncic's rookie card he plays for the mavs mm-hmm. And then I bought uh, Donovan Mitchell, who plays for the Utah Jazz. They just lost the other night, game seven, by like two points, which mm-hmm. sucks. Um, I bought two of his rookie cards. I bought Alonzo Ball rookie card. Most people know the Ball family, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> thanks to the dad. That dude's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think yeah. So those were the graded cards I got because mm-hmm. you can buy cards that are graded already, yeah. or you can get the cards and send them in graded. I also bought 15 Barry Bonds rookies uh, mm-hmm. for a pretty cheap price. So I'm looking to send those in soon mm-hmm. uh, to get graded by PSA. But that costs, that's going to cost a couple hundred bucks. And so I'm hoping they're graded well so then I can make money. Hmm. But yeah, um, I just posted on my Instagram story to see if any of my friends wanted to buy. Yeah. Um, but I don't, no one's really reached out. Only like a right. couple people asked about it. Yeah. So I'm probably just going to end up selling them on eBay soon, but yeah, I made, I'm going to make good money. So how does it actually work? Like, wh- like, did you buy them on eBay or do you buy them? Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. buy them on eBay and then you flip them. Yeah. Or you get lucky and pull them in a pack, you know, mm-hmm. but that's, that's tougher to do and yeah. you usually spend way too much money. Right. Is it like that. any card? Like any, like not like any card, but obviously certain cards have a higher value, right? Yeah. Like, okay, Luca, um, mm. you know, PSA ten, right? That's like the highest grade yeah, or the whatever. Grade 10. And and is is there something about rookie years? Do people yeah. only give a shit about rookie years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, practically, unless it's gonna be like an autograph card or something. Okay. But yeah, rookie's huge. Um, I mean, because sports cards have become so huge again, people like certain different things like like Anthony Davis played for I think it was the Pelicans mm-hmm. his whole career until uh this year or it was last year or whatever that he started playing for the Lakers. Yeah. So people like that first year Lakers card. Uh-huh. Same with LeBron, they like that first year Lakers card. Mm-hmm. But the first year Heat card too, but then you know the first year Cavs card as well. Yeah. Um Michael Jordan's rookie is like basically one of the top cards ever that's sold for a lot it was weird though his value went down when that documentary came out really yeah i think it's because just so i watched many that people. Yeah. i didn't i need really? to though yeah. yeah it's pretty good um, yeah but it's just yeah it's crazy like i don't so i've heard gary talk about it mm-hmm. obviously i saw i saw your stuff and then I've i've heard like other people talk about it i don't know if you've ever seen um on youtube valuetainment patrick bet david I have none. No, uh, he's pretty good. I definitely check him out. But he, um, okay. but I, uh, I watch a lot of his stuff, and he talks about it too. I don't. He's like a Mickey Mantle card. I think he has some some oh, other stuff sweet. too, or whatever. But, but, um, the point is that like a lot of people are in on this, you know. And I'm, yeah. and that's, I, you know, me just being like a pseudo sports dude, you know. Like I play it, and occasionally, you know, it's like whatever I'll watch. But like, mm. it's not something that's like super like on my radar, but it just keeps popping up and it's very yeah. interesting. I don't understand the market is what I'm saying. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. I can't, I haven't fully been able to grasp like how you can go on eBay and buy a card for, you know, it says PSA 10 mm. Luca, um, like whatever, $200 or whatever mm. it is. Right. And then, and then you can turn around and sell it. Like, is there li- I'm I'm trying to relate it to like stocks. Yeah, is there yeah, like yeah. an actual thing somewhere that says like, oh, this is roughly worth this much now, or is it literally just whatever people are pricing them at? I think there's actually been 
some people that are starting to like make websites with graphs showing yeah. like the trajections, like literally like a stock, yeah. Yeah. which is really cool. Yeah. It's really some advanced stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's kind of like with the sneaker game, like, all right, what are people paying for this? Mm -hmm. um, so if you're able to get it cheap, then okay, like you can flip it and make money. Um, it's crazy. So yeah, like with the, with the sports, like um, Luca, I bought Luca's card for 700 bucks, the rookie yeah um psa 10 and uh right now it's selling for about 1750 around there me. yeah wow yeah so but the thing is like is most it, people like there's a lot of like you're saying okay well okay keep going and then i have more questions <laughs> uh, yeah 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 like the the past couple of days i've been looking and they just got knocked out of the playoffs but it's it's around that 17 1800 mark 1900 like lately the past few days i've i even saw some to like 2000 uh his, what's the difference what do you mean is there any difference in between like two cards that are like listed for 2000 and like 1600 i mean they're psa 10 right yeah no there, there's no difference it's just some people are willing to like you know keep bidding higher and higher uh when he what did he, he dropped like over 40 points the one game and had like a triple double or something mm -hmm. like that and it went up to like 2300 um fuck? and then it <sighs> like went down and like Donovan Mitchell, the guy I got, he had a huge game. Um, I think he scored something around fifty points. And uh, I bought, what was it? I bought the one rookie for like two fifty. Yeah, now it's at like six hundred, five hundred. Wow. Um, because he had a huge game and played really well. Um, so yeah. Um, there was a lot of other guys too I wanted to buy, but I just didn't. And they did. They've done well in the playoffs, and their their market value has gone up. Wow. Yeah. So you, you have to know what you're doing. You can't buy, you know, bums and Yeah. Yeah. So these are all the same exact thing. Like like a like a like a Luca it's PSA ten. Mm hmm Literally like every single one. If you type that in on eBay, they're all gonna look exactly the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So <laughs> the other part of this that I'm kinda like super interested in, who makes these cards? Is it tops? <laughs> there's there's a ton of different brands there's yeah. uh right now the the gold standard is the panini prism okay uh yeah so prism there's a um the one donovan mitchell and the luke i have are prisms yeah um but yeah tops panini fleer i don't think fleer anymore uh there's upper deck although they kind of yeah. suck <laughs> uh honestly they do um yeah i think there's a few others but yeah so they make these cards and how does how does one originate a uh, uh a card like this out of a pack yeah yeah people buy the packs um they buy the hobby boxes which are huge um, so it's like finding a golden ticket like in a big box yeah and a bunch of others like jags yeah <laughs> yeah and like you know a couple years ago when the sports market wasn't a, a big deal like right around luca's rookie year two years ago um you know it wasn't um huge so i think like a luca psa 10 at one point was just like 100 200 bucks like that was it and now it's two grand you know this is so weird yeah it's like it, it's just so crazy i mean i guess i'm just trying to understand the value and like where the value actually comes from mm -hmm. because like it just like spawned up out of nowhere yeah. I mean, I guess you could say kind of the same thing about the U.S. dollar at this point, though. Because yeah, it's just made up. But yeah, but and you know, we're printing off trillions of dollars. Yeah, so. yeah <laughs> but like it's it's so it's so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Um, like I don't know how you. So, so like it gets it gets originated out of a pack. Somebody pulls it, whatever. They like hit the lottery in a sense because right. it, what do these packs go for? Like a couple bucks. Uh yeah, uh, some are more expensive than others. Uh, there's tons of brands out there now that have like ridiculously, like they'll, they'll sell boxes that are like $10,000, like, but like you're guaranteed to get tons of autographs and stuff for them, stuff really? like that. Yeah. I would, I would imagine that cause the, the, the flip side where my head went, right. Is like, okay, so there's people that are ca card collectors and card mm -hmm. flippers that are making money off of this, right? Yeah. And if I'm Prism or if I'm Tops or whatever, I'm like, what the fuck? We're selling these cards for like 10 bucks or like something, you know, mm -hmm. in general, right? Like these packs. I mean, mm -hmm. I go to, you know, can you buy this at like a Walmart? 
Yeah. Like, no, so, I, so like the Luka Doncic card yeah. that you have could have been at, in a pack in Walmart. Right. That's oh probably my, where I got it oh from. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's probably where it originated from. Yeah. That's crazy. So like they're yeah. they're literally losing out pretty hard on this, I would assume. Like well, the actual companies. No, no. Like I, I think it's actually good um, because, the, yeah, like every, I've been to Walmart a few times to check just for like for fun during quarantine. I'm like, screw it. I'll go and spend like 20 bucks on a little uh box but they're sold out they're sold out everywhere really they're everything is like so much stuff is out at all these different walmarts and targets those are the main places uh but then there's so like it's good for them because they're producing and tons of people are buying unlike five years ago where it sat on walmart's shelf for three months and no one touched it do you have like a if you had a guess right so you have two Mm -hmm. you need two of the, the bigger names yeah this is just like a random data question, but mm-hmm. uh, if if we could figure out an answer to it, I think it'd be it'd be interesting. But I but I guess it it almost answers itself. Like how many how many of the cards that they produce actually are valuable? You know, what I'm saying? like what's the percentage? Uh, is it like one percent? Yeah, do the yeah. Re- do the rest of them literally get thrown in the trash? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's probably something like that. Yeah, people do not care about just like the simple base cards because because they every uh, like tops baseball. They have every single player in the league, you know, like who gives a crap about like 95% of them. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just a a base card. That's, that's all it is. So like, yeah, if you like to collect and, um, I have cards in my basement, maybe I should just like, yeah, I would look through, man. Is there, is there some, I mean, I think they're probably mostly baseball, but like, how do Mm -hmm. you, how do you even go about that? Like, like, what do you, like, what do you do? Like, you just literally look through them all and see if there's anybody that's decent. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the more you do your research and you know what people care about, yeah, that that helps. Um, because there's, I mean, for me too, with baseball, there's probably great players back in the day. I don't even know their name or I forget about them. So I could have them sitting in my house and I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you just got to do tons of research. I have so much. Like I got so much from my cousin when I was younger. He gave yeah. me his whole collection. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't think there's too much valuable from it. Yeah. Um, it sucks. I wish I had my dad's collection or he had it for his own sake because he had so much good stuff that even went for a lot of money before this huge uproar in cards. Um, like he had Roberto Clemente rookie cards. Oh, geez. Yeah. He had like the whole World Series teams like that stuff would have sold for a lot. But his mom threw it away oh, when, when he was like gone or something when he was living in an apartment. It was at her house, and she just threw them all away. Yeah. So it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I don't know. That's just an. It's such an interesting market to me because. I think it's here to stay because you know people. It's it's so huge. Like you and me, we look up YouTube videos how to make money. Yeah. Different stuff. It's like another stock market. It's another yeah. flip game of sneakers. Yeah. It's it's another way people are gonna make money. Yeah. So I think it's gonna stay huge for a while because everyone's just in on it to make money. Why did it go it's away? It's fun. I think just because it was mass produced, uh, all these cards, there wasn't too much value in them. Um, I still don't understand the value, but yeah, I guess. But you I really guess don't. It, I guess it's literally <laughs> it's just it's just one of those things where it's like if people are willing to pay that much for this and like yeah. there's value associated with it, then that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also not a sneakerhead, so Neither if am I, I if I understood that a little bit more, then maybe I would maybe I would understand this a little bit more. Yeah, but um. But yeah, that's so interesting. There's no reason to say that you can't make money though in this country. Like, I mean, yeah, you, you, can do <laughs> you can no. do something. You can do something. Yeah, if you have a cell phone, you're set. Yeah, like yeah, you can find some sort of way. That's crazy. Yeah, or just walk into stores and buy stuff dirt cheap. Like Gary Vee has talked about that. How you can go into like a dollar store. Yeah. Or um, what's that one? Uh, Goodwill. Yeah. Yeah, you can go into those places and like. Yeah just resell stuff or he's, go to garage sales he's a master flipper yeah he goes oh, to like yeah. um you, you see those stories on his instagram and stuff like that and he goes to garage sales and yeah. he flips it for like 400 bucks yeah trash <laughs> talk yeah that's, trash that's talk the yeah, series. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's crazy good stuff um do you um sort of on that same theme are you into minimalism at all yeah i am yeah i, I watch some youtube people with that yeah, i figured you might be yeah Who, you know some of the names uh, so I've listened a little bit to the minimalists, those mm. two guys. I watched the documentary. Yeah, me too. Yeah. That yeah, was yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, the dude who produced the documentary. Who Matt has Diavella. His, yep. 
Yeah. I like him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they really put out good content. Yeah, definitely. I can't, I don't know. It's another one too. It's like, I feel like there's a period, there was at least a period in my life. I think probably most people that, that kind of go through similar stuff as us, they're like, it's same thing with finance. It's like you watch a shit ton of the content and you're yeah. like, wow, this is amazing. This is amazing. And then you get to a certain point. It's like, okay, I've heard like almost all of the stuff, like all the fundamentals, all of like the, the intermediate stuff. Yeah. And there's no way, unless I want to dedicate my life to this, it's, I kind of see it as like, okay, I got this. I got a hold on this. I'm going to put it like, you know, away. Like, you know, I, I just store it in my brain or something like that. Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to move on to the next thing. And I'm going to try to like, you know, tackle like whatever the next pillar is or whatever the next like, you know, big area of my life that I need to do. Mm-hmm. But like minimalism is something that's like an ongoing thing. Actually, I think, I think Matt Diavella had uh, a video, I think it was recently, but I, I always look at my recommended. So it might've been from a while ago, yeah. but it was like myths or something about minimalism. And okay. it was, he was saying that's like, it's like a process. Yeah. You know, you can't, it's not just like, oh, you're done after you, you know, clean up your room, like no. Jordan Peterson would say <laughs> or something like yeah. that. It's like, it's constantly ongoing. And that's something to, to blend this back with our other conversation, I went through and I was trying to get all of the shit that I had in my room that I didn't use, like and it didn't oh, that's good. really anywhere, mm-hmm. um, and try to like sell that sort of a st- that sort of stuff, yeah, um, like on Facebook or whatever. Um, but I just think minimalism has so many benefits, not just For like sure. physically, but also like mentally. I just feel like I have so many less distractions. Oh yeah, uh, I don't know you- if you feel the same. Yeah, yeah, and you realize, like, what's valuable and what isn't. Um, Yeah, I mean, myself, like most Americans, like, we have a habit of hoarding stuff and just buying way too much crap, stuff we don't need. Yeah. And really, yeah, like how you said, like, you know, there's no excuse in this country to make money. Like, I I read one time, you're in the 1% of the world if you make, like, 35 grand a year. I think that's what it is. So, and that... We kind of like in America, thirty-five grand. You just think of like meh. Yeah, it's that's like it. your poverty. Yeah, but, but like you're really like so much better than almost everyone right. in the world. So like, if you're making thirty-five grand a year, I think it would be smart to take on that minimalist lifestyle. Maybe yeah. not live in the nicest place ever. Yeah, quit mm-hmm. buying stupid crap. Mm-hmm. Save money and invest, and like you could probably end up having a decent life. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. Ju- I think just. I don't know what happens. I don't know what has happened to a lot of the people that are in our generation. And even like before, it's not just like millennials. It's not just Z people. It's like, it's like Mm -hmm. whatever. It's like, I don't know who decided that. I love material things, right? Like I like nice microphones. I like this type of shit, but like, we're trying to like build things here. Like, but just like random shit. I can't stand, you know, like stuff like that doesn't have a purpose. Yeah. It's really tough for me. Like, it's mm. really tough to just have all that sort of stuff and like give in to almost like instant gratification of materialism. I, I just think that it plagues a lot of people. Yeah. And it probably makes a lot of people like more long term, way less happy than yeah, the yeah. instant gratification that they get. And I think that that just plays such a big role in, you know, why people are so, I don't know, upset and just unfulfilled. I I agree completely. I I see that in a few of my friends and I feel mm-hmm. bad. I mean, we all have those moments, but like I know some people that just buy stuff all the time. Yeah. And I can tell like they're thinking it's making them happy, but it's not. Right. They're not fulfilled. They're not working hard. They're not chasing their dreams. They're just thinking like let me go out to eat and like buy a ton of crap and then the next day buy this video game and then the next day buy this thing off the internet that I think is cool and then you know buy a subscription of this and it's like you're not saving it all like you're just going to have all this crap and you're barely even going to focus on it because right. you have so much crap yeah yeah that's why Elon Musk said like he, he sold his house in California or whatever yeah he's like yeah it doesn't make me happy yeah. that dude's probably so full on on going to Mars right now yeah like that's probably always thinking about which is awesome yeah but it's yeah he, He's an interesting cat, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 he's he's a big inspiration to me. And and me too. and you know, I don't I don't follow him extremely, like I you know like other do uh, like I do other people, just because mm-hmm. he's almost not telling his own story. Yeah, he I mean doesn't. he does occasionally, right? Like yeah. on Joe Rogan and stuff like that. Like you hear his side of things, but most of the things from him, he's fucking working. Yeah, and other people is. are talking about him, which right. is not normally the best way to get information, as yeah. we've already discussed. So it's tough to actually get like a good a good beat on 
what he is up to, what he thinks about and stuff. But when he was on like Joe Rogan, and I think that's when he was talking about like how he sold all of his shit and yeah. everything like that. That that's was wild. extremely eye opening. And I just, I don't know how you can't have respect for a type of person like that and that type of lifestyle where you're just so dedicated to whatever you want to do. Like you're the thing that brings you the most fulfillment mm-hmm. and like changing the world, going to Mars, electric, yeah. you know, electric vehicles, like all these things. Um, that you're just willing to just say, yeah, I have all this money, but I don't need any of this shit, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's just kind of how I, I would, I would love to get to maybe not that, that point, but you know what I mean? Like just not focus on like things that don't bring me, don't have a purpose. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to always try to stay fulfilled as possible. Um, you know, with, with all that and those and anything that, um, you know, kind of, I don't know, doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't fill that need. I just yeah. think you don't need it. I yeah. agree. And I, I still make the mistakes for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like Matt Diavella said, and you were yeah. saying it's a process. Yeah. Um, but that goes with everything. So yeah, you just got to keep learning. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, man, uh, this has been tremendous. Um, I want to hit you with these, uh, these final three okay. questions. Um, because I think that it's, We've talked a lot about them, but I think that for somebody like yourself, I think I'm I'm anxious to hear your 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 answers to these, mm-hmm. and then also I mean, um, you know, just excited to continue to see where everything goes for you. So, Thanks. um, so the first one that I ask is, uh, what would you say like your top three influences are that have been like to this point in your life? So I think that I want to say that honestly, from all the guests that I've had so far, this is no um. This is no disrespect to any of the guests that we've had previously, <laughs> but I think that you and I think the same when it comes to some of this stuff, right? We've had yeah. people that have impacted our lives, um, you know, some of the names that we've already named in the, in the episode here, and there's people that, you know, just have had a profound effect on us, mm-hmm. right? Other individuals that have been through things, and then we were going through things, and they you know, changed our perspective, right? Yeah. So just in general, to this point in your life, who would you say the top three influences are, um, that have that have had an influence on you uh and they could be you know indirectly people that you never met people that you know directly in your life bodies of people whoever Mm -hmm. um and you can explain why (laughs) okay yeah uh i like i hate to say the same people but it's really who it is um because i've been thinking in my head like i mean there's some other people i could say but yeah top three number one's jordan peterson yeah um you know, uh, as we talked, like he's just a very serious guy Mm -hmm. and a lot of people, his critics will say like, Oh, he's just saying common sense. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have a lot of that today. (laughs) Yeah. I think a lot of people are, have lost that. Yeah. I don't exactly. I don't know. Yeah. And so hearing from, cause he's like a father figure, you know, Yeah. and I have a great dad too. So it's, it's nice to have both. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I think it's necessary to hear the stuff he has to say. Um, and then number two, I'd say Gary V, mm-hmm. um, the way he's just influenced me is just, as he says, work your face off. Mm-hmm. Like that's just, that's just how I've, I've felt these past few years is like what I've been wanting to do is just work my butt off every day. Um, get involved as much as I can, like, because that's, that's how a lot of these people get so rich and successful yep. It's just put your head down and work your face off. Like there's no secrets those are, oh, I hate those YouTube mm. videos, like seven secrets to becoming a millionaire and like all, yeah. the, all those stupid catchy yeah. titles. I hate that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's no myths. Just work your butt off because a lot of people aren't, a lot of people are just content. Yeah. Just never be content. Um, and then number three, uh, is definitely Joe Rogan mm-hmm. because I just love how open-minded he is and he's willing to talk to everybody. Mm-hmm. So I try to do the same, just be yeah. relaxed and talk to people. Um, and also from a physical, um, fitness standpoint with him, you know, you look at the age he's at, he's in his fifties and he's yeah. still jacked, yeah. still works out like every day. You know, yeah. I want to be like that yeah. for a long time. Yeah. He also has a very good mental stability too. Like, that too, yeah. like mm-hmm. that's, I envy that a, a hell of a lot. Yeah. You know, Cause like that's, it's impressive what he does. And yeah. I would, I would say those three same for me yeah (laughs) huge yeah definitely definitely big influences on me as well cool um what would you say is your 
your best bit of advice for anybody? Like if you had to give anybody just like a, a sum up of, of how like maybe you think people should lead their lives or like just like, you know, any sort of, um, you know, just good bit of wisdom that you can pass on. Um, it's tough. Uh, I think just back to what I was saying with Gary V is just mm-hmm. like, I mean, it's so cliche to say just to work hard, but I'd say that over time, you know, like, what are you doing, you know, besides like when you go to class or you're going to work, what are you doing with that time uh, when you're at home and stuff? Like, are you eating a bunch of junk food and playing video games mm-hmm. or whatever else? Like you should be spending that time for, you know, physical um, your health, um, that well being mentally as well, but like working hard on your passion and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I tried to do during college was when I'm not, um, in class and stuff is getting super involved in other, other ways. And I worked for free so much. Like I was willing to do that because I knew it would help me in the long run. Yeah. If I didn't work for free so much in college, I probably wouldn't have gotten this GA position. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, I'm, I think you should try well in school too, Mm -hmm. but I didn't take it super seriously because I know the work experience is what matters. At least it does in sports. It's different if you're an engineer, you know, you need to have that 4.0. That's a little more important. Yeah. But in sports, never once did they ask for my GPA at any internship. I had a 2.9. Like Mm -hmm. that's not great at all. Um, It's not horrendous. It's about networking and about about getting those opportunities. Exactly. So yeah, work your face off and just meet as many people as you can. Um, yeah, I think that's important. Gotcha. Yeah. That's great advice. I like it. Um, last one's a layup and, uh, not to no no sports pun intended there. <laughs> <on> a <layup. laughs> Um, but, uh, but, um, where can people find out more about you? I know that there, as you continue to go here, there's probably gonna be more outlets mm-hmm. at some point, but you will be back on the show. Cool. <laughs> you'll be I'm a return, you'll be on. a return guest, nice. um, down the line here as we, you know, and <laughs> we'll continue to follow your story and uh, everything that you're doing. Um, but as of right now, where can people find you? I'll have links and everything in the uh, show notes and the description everywhere, but maybe some of the couple places. Um, my, I'm probably on Twitter the most. Okay. Uh, that's jsmith1187. Gotcha. Um, yeah, in the notes, you'll be able to see mm-hmm. it better. Yep. And then uh, Instagram, mm-hmm. jsmith1187.71. <laughs> gotcha. It's a lot of numbers. <laughs> yeah, pens numbers. Yeah. Uh, Add me on Snap now. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> we'll put it all down there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, my LinkedIn too, but um, yeah. yeah. I don't have a YouTube channel or anything yet, gotcha. so. <laughs> yet. yet. Yeah, <laughs> one day probably. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah. no, we'll definitely make sure to link it there. Uh, it's what I like to do, man. I want to make sure that anybody that, you know, takes the time to come on here, chats with me, talks mm-hmm. to our audience. Um, you know, if you're doing anything that we can help, you know, we don't have a ton of viewers right now, but one yeah. day, you know, hopefully one day, yeah. we'll, uh, you know, I just like to spread the love there of the thank support you. and stuff <laughs> like that. So, um, thank you so much, man. I appreciate yeah. it. This has been great. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to our next talk already. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So maybe with Jesse. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're doing the round tables and everything like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> cool. uh, that'll be dope. But, uh, thank you so much, man. I really yeah, appreciate it. Thanks again. Yeah. See absolutely. some Chipotle. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Time to eat. We haven't eaten anything all day. I know. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Fueled by Progress with our guest, Jordan Smith. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and checking it out. We'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you.